Hey guys, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, getting ready to take another look at a Calculus AB video over topic 4.2. We're talking about straight line motion, connecting position, velocity, and acceleration. And in our example two, we're gonna tie all those ideas together. So let's take a look. Here is our example, number two, from the notes that I use for my students at Avon High School. If you don't have these notes with you, you can just kind of follow along, and I think there's a lot of this that you're going to be able to uh, kind of understand and connect with what you're doing in your calc class at your school. So we're given uh, the fact that a particle moves along an x-axis with a position function of s of t equal t squared minus 4t plus 2. You're asked to essentially fill out what this table is going to to convey over the first five seconds of motion for this particle. But because we have velocity and acceleration information in the table, we're going to have to take those two derivatives. So those aren't going to be very tough derivatives. Remember that v of t is the same as the derivative of position. That's very important. So in this particular instance, you have 2t minus 4 for that derivative. And then your acceleration is just the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of position. So we pick up where we left off with this v of t and if we, of course we get an acceleration of 2. Now to complete the chart for the first five seconds we're just going to have to plug in these numbers into the appropriate function and simplify. So for s of t which will probably be the one that's the most time consuming if we're going to use him I'm going to highlight him in yellow we'll use the numbers given and I'm, I could certainly do this with a calculator but I don't think it's mandatory that you use one it's just going to be a little tedious but I'm going to go through this pretty quickly um, if you need to pause the video to verify these results feel free to do so so if I let t be zero in the s of t it looks pretty clear that I'm going to get a position of two if t is one I've got one minus four plus two which is negative one and if t is 2, it looks like I've got 4 minus 8 plus 2, which is negative 2. Got to think about these. 3 would give me 9 minus 12 plus 2, which is negative 1. 4 would be probably an easier one. 16 minus 16 plus 2 is 2. And 5 would give us 25 minus 20, 5 already, plus 2. So I'd have a position of 7. And as I said, these things are going to get a little bit easier now because for my v of t function here in green, I would use a pretty simple version of a, of a polynomial, 2t minus 4. So if I let t be 0, this is going to be negative 4. If t is 1, I get negative 2. If t is 4, I get 0. Maybe you can see that there is a consistent linear um, uh, behavior here where it looks like our velocity just increases by 2 for each value of time all the way up to t equal 5. Now the absolute value of v of t. Now I don't have any specific function called the absolute value of v, but all I really need to do is just know that it's going to take the absolute value of this value that I have here in the v of t column. So anything that's negative is going to revert to a positive, and anything that was already positive or zero will stay the same. And what we want to do is remember from a previous video what is the meaning of the absolute value of velocity, and the answer is speed this would denote the speed of this particle. Speed will never have a negative value because we only look at its magnitude, right? We don't worry about its direction, whether we were moving to the right or to the left. A of t is probably going to be the easiest one of all, right? So if I highlight this A of t function here in blue and in blue there, we see that no matter what t we plug in, we are always looking at an acceleration of two this particle has a constant acceleration. Now, what I want to do is move to the number line first, and then we'll talk about filling in this description, which is really the, the meat and potatoes of this problem, in my opinion. Um, it says to complete the chart for the first five seconds and, and show where the particle is on the number line. Well, we did something like this in a previous example, so I don't think that this is going to be too terribly difficult. In other words, we know that our position 
is going to be at 2 at time 0. So I'll put a little mark right here on the number line and know that that's going to correspond to time 0. But then I know that this particle is going to be at position, according to this, negative 1 at time 1. So I can do that as such. At time 2, it moves just a little bit more to the left. So we'll denote that at time 2. And then at time 3, something has happened. It has moved back to the other direction, and it finds itself back at negative 1 at time 3. It seems to be heading in that same rightward direction, finding itself at position 2 at time 4. And then it finishes way down here to the right at time 5. So as I did before, we can use a, a, another point. I'll just color this one in purple. And this will kind of demonstrate what's happening. This particle is moving to the left, and then it seems like it's turned around and then decided to move to the right until it got to time 5. Well, that's all fine and dandy. However, that doesn't give us the full picture. We don't know exactly how fast this particle is moving. We don't know well, we don't know its acceleration. Yeah, we do know its acceleration. It's two all the time. But at least we have to think about a little bit more about is it speeding up, slowing down, and whatnot. And that's where the description comes into play. And I know this description is very vague. What do we really want by this idea of description? And I, I get that. i tell you what, in the future, you're probably going to get a little bit more specific language in terms of what we want to say about the the description of the motion of the particle. So let me help you a little bit. Let's at least determine if the particle is moving left or right, and let's determine if it's being pulled even more so to the left or to the right. That means you're looking at the sign of the velocity and the sign of the acceleration. So if we see that the velocity here is negative 4, we should note immediately that that means that the particle is moving left. So we'll say the particle is moving left. And if we see that the acceleration is positive, that means that it's being pulled to the right. At the same time, the particle is moving left and being pulled to the right is actually going to say that this particle is slowing down. And that's this idea about the opposite signs of acceleration and velocity that are going to be so important. And we're going to continue to talk about those in some of our next videos. Now, because we've already written the particle is moving, I'll just let us use some quotations there. And if we see once again that we have a negative velocity, we still use the word left here. And I think the cat is out of the bag, so to speak. And if the acceleration is always positive too, then we can say that the particle is always being pulled right. So the only thing that's going to differ here is whether we're saying moving left or perhaps moving right. Or so we think. Because when we get here to the time 2 and the velocity is 0, well, we only know one thing about that instance. And that is the particle is stopped. Maybe this particle has some acceleration. Maybe it's wanting to do something, but the fact that the velocity is zero means that it is not going to be moving. So we really don't worry about what the value of the acceleration is at this point. When we continue with the next part of this, we have velocities that are positive the rest of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and restart my statement here. So we know that the particle is now moving again. And because we have this positive velocity, we're going to say to the right. And we also know that the positive acceleration is going to signify that the particle is pulled to the right. And I think that we can pretty much guarantee that that is the case the rest of the way. Particle is moving right and is pulled right at time 4. And the particle is moving to the right and is pulled right at time 5 as well. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and write the word right only because it's such an important piece of this. I, I want to make sure that I at least drew some focus to that.
So if we return to the scenario, and I've lost my purple point, so that's okay, I'll just make a new one here. If I really wanted to paint the picture about what is this particle doing? Well, I know that initially it's being uh, it's moving to the to the left, but the fact that it's pulled to the right means throughout this process, this guy is slowing down. Perhaps it started pretty quick, but it's kind of slowing down as I get closer and closer and closer to time two, which puts it at negative two. And then when I reach that position, the particle is stopped. And then the particle starts to move right. And because the particle is pulled to the right, as it continues to move, it will accelerate. Hence, why you can see these velocities are increasing all the way to time five. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an analytical and a visual impression of how particle motion works on a straight line. We've got several more examples that are going to address many other kinds of issues and throw particle motion at you in a very different environment throughout the rest of the videos in the series. So we definitely want you to stick around for those. Thanks for joining.